<sighs> Hello everyone and welcome to a very unexpected spot review. I'm pretty sure most people can agree with me when I say that there are a bunch of other areas in this game that have a much higher priority than Sosons to get a spot review for me to cover it. But nevertheless, here we are talking about Sosons in 2019, if this area is worth anything and you know, if you should visit it. I would say I never really intended to test this spot, it just so happened for me to do a spot review on it, because um, you know, you guys keep recommending me stuff like uh, Akman or Manshaum areas that people actively try to gear themselves to get to grind in the first place and they look forward to those areas, yet here I am talking about Sosons, an area that has existed at the very least since I started playing this game and since then it got almost no buffs whatsoever, except uh, at some point when the developers increased the monster respawn rate for Sosons. Still, let's talk about it uh, uh, in the general spot review fashion, see what this spot can offer and you know all of the experience rates and uh, the money per hour values. I'm gonna begin by saying that I will try at least somewhat to make this video shorter than usual just because there's no use discussing in depth about an area that most people already know everything about. If you don't know about Sosans, you are literally new to the game and you played it for less than a couple of weeks because everyone at some, some point went to Sosans and these days people only go there to you know boost other people to level 56 or maybe to grind until they get 57 or 58. So why did I test it? Because a couple of weeks ago I got so bored of my slow wizard's playstyle that I felt like I was in the right mood to make a mistake, more commonly known as mystics. Um, when the class was released I hated it, I couldn't even get it to 55 for the free rewards, but now after playing it for a while I just felt like playing some class with punches and martial arts and stuff like that and yeah it's enjoyable to grind with i got it all the way up to level 60 after making my after doing my main quest line to get all those inventory slots that i needed and transferring my weight limit gear from my main i believe two weeks ago i didn't even have the weight limit gear finished it didn't have all of the expensive crystals in it but uh, still with around 1000 weight limit without anything purchased on this new character i decided maybe i should uh, use sosons as my main grinding spot to get it from 57 to level 60 and that's what i did uh, two weeks ago i intended to main mystic and uh, uh, if not main at least make it an alt for grinding and so i wanted to get as many skill points as possible i used those 530 percent experience scrolls that we got a couple of weeks ago on it and by the end when i was level 60 i did have soft cap skill points skill points um, I chose Sosans because I remembered this area was the best for skill experience. I always recommended Sosans for skill experience and I, you know, from my past experience I knew that if I want my mystic to have as many skill points as possible, I should just guide Sosans. And why not do two things at once and test it in the same time. That's why this video exists. So let me begin with my gear, I'm gonna just say I had weight limit armor, you don't need a lot of gear, I had I believe pry or duo green armor, my weapons were also green grade but I have very good accessories, so my AP was around 200, you don't need 200 AP for this place, I believe the, the cap was 160 or 170. Um, if you have 180 AP, that should be more than enough to one-shot these monsters. 
uh, in general at low levels what matters most is the skill level and not the AP. If you are level 60 with all of your awakening skills maxed out you can have a lot less AP and still achieve the same result. So uh, yeah, I spent my levels from 57 to 60 at Sosons, there's my gear out of the way, and for the rotation I used the Sosons main rotation, which I'm gonna show playing in the background if it didn't already start, just for the sake of those few people who actually don't know what Sosons is, because they probably never went there for whatever reason. Most of us, as I said, already know everything about Sosans, so there's no point going in depth about it. Um, the area itself is very unpopulated these days for good reason. It's not a very good spot, except you know, except the skill experience. So not a lot of people still grind here. I didn't have issues grinding the main rotation. And uh, this might change when Shy comes out, I myself am planning to make one, I might even end up maining it. Um, after a few weeks go by, I'm pretty sure the spots will go back to normal, but when Shy comes out it might become a little bit more populated. Otherwise, in general, very uncontested, you shouldn't have much of an issue grinding here. But be prepared to come with a lot of weight limit and inventory spaces. Um, for experience rates, I'm gonna start actually with my trash per hour because that should go first. So if I look on my Excel file, you will see that almost every single session is about an hour because I use the experience scrolls. That's the main reason. If I didn't have experience scrolls, it would still be close to one hour because after about an hour and let's say 10 or 15 minutes, I would either be overweight from the trash because I couldn't, I could no longer overstack it, or I had too many armor pieces in my inventory and other similar issues. So, in general, if you want a spot, to, uh, if you want to pick a spot to grind for like six hours or four hours at once, this is not it. At Sosans, after one or one and a half hours, you are forced to leave all the way to a city with a storage to actually get rid of all of those armors that. You save up because you want to sell them to the marketplace. So after each of these sessions I would usually either put an end to that day, this test took a while, I wasn't exactly in a hurry with it, or I would you know, go to Heidel, take a break and then return for a second session. You definitely need to take breaks after every hour or so to empty that inventory. For trash per hour, I got the first run was slower than the others, maybe because I was adjusting to the spot. The average was about 6.2 thousand trash per hour with my tier 3 pets. You could say they are all tier 3 because I have 3 tier 3s, 1 tier 2 and 1 tier 4. So on average, let's say full tier 3 pets. And if you look at the very last session, 6.7 thousand trash per hour, it says ranger run. Also you can see I started at level 58, I thought it was 57, but here it says 58. Um, I had one session where I grinded the B spot because the main rotation was taken and I ended the test at level 60. The last run is on my ranger just because she is level 61 and to test experience on her, again for the consistency of this series. For experience, let's talk about that one ranger run, I basically put all of her experience buffs in Excel, the screenshots showed me you know, what I had, you know how the experience tests go, basically this is the result, this is the only thing you have to pay attention to, these two numbers with 0.080% per hour normal experience and one skill point level up and so on for skill experience per hour. This is at her 6.7 thousand trash per hour clearing speed, which again may or may not be faster than my mystic, I would say it's identical. From the way the monsters were respawning, I would always complete the entire rotation and the monsters would be either fully respawned or one or two or, the, or, one or two of them were still respawning. That was the case for both my ranger and my mystic, so I would say they were pretty much identical. But since my ranger was dashing 
I had some stamina issues on my Ranger, at times I was running out of stamina or, uh, you know, I, I noticed that my Mystic is dashing significantly faster between packs than my Ranger. So maybe because she moved slightly slower, my pets had slightly more time to pick up trash and maybe that's why the trash per hour is higher. This area has a lot of monsters, the mob density is very good. so. Having better pets like tier 4s, full tier 4s will obviously increase your trash, while having only tier 1 pets will obviously decrease your trash per hour quite a lot, just because there's a lot of trash left on the ground. After that, I proceeded to make this chart. I converted the experience rate from my ranger to my average trash per hour to basically say that these are the experience rates that my mystic would get, but I never really ended up using these for anything, just because in the past I always tested experience on my ranger or on my wizard. So in the end I still used my ranger clearing speed that last run for the 350% comparison. So let's get into that chart. Basically considering the case where you would have 350% experience rate with buffs, how would this place compare to the other ones that I already tested in the past? I would say not very well for, skill, for experience and very well for skill experience. You will immediately notice it has zero on Marnie stones, it has no Marnie stones, and because of that, if you look at Fogans, Nagas and Bandits, you will notice that Level 61 is the best one for Marnie stones because at level 61 Marnie stones have the best scaling possible. To a point where even with 350% experience rate you get more experience from Marnie stones than you get from the actual monsters after applying the buffs to them. So without a Marnie stone it will lose a lot of experience obviously and the monster experience itself is basically identical to what I got at Proti Cave so it doesn't e even in monster experience alone it doesn't compare to Fogans, Bandits or Nagas and overall it's really low on the chart it's basically close to what I got at Piraku Jail. So experience wise at level 61 not worth it, maybe between 56 and 58 um, I could recommend it because at those levels you either don't have Marnie stones or they have a very low scaling. So between 56 and 58 maybe come here, otherwise don't. Skill experience, at least I learned something from this series if it comes down to skill experience because I used to always recommend Sossons for skill experience, I always said it's the best in the game. Nowadays, at least after this test, I can see that, just look at bandits, it's that simple. I tested bandits and Sossons both on my ranger, on both of them trying my best to, you know, grind them somewhat fast and uh, Sossons is just barely any faster than bandits, which means that I should no longer recommend Sossons, if the, exp the normal experience is that low, um, I should just recommend Bandits because the skill experience is basically identical. You don't get anything, you know, any huge gain to be worth going to Sossons for that. Um, I should point out the skill experience was always tested at soft cap skill points, so 1.6 something thousand skill points, so these are all values took at the soft cap skill experience rate. And that should bring an end to the skill, to the experience part of the video and let's talk about the money per hour. For money per hour, uh, this area has three different types of trash. I didn't always exchange the black one, I forgot what name it has, but the black trash I will show it most definitely on the screen at some point now. Um, for a black trash you have to go to a different NPC to exchange it and um, I didn't always feel like it was worth my time or I was too lazy to go there because I would always ex exchange only one of it for one million, one ingot and if I sell that same trash to the NPC it would be maybe 600 or 700 thousand silver, something like that. So it wasn't always worth the, the time. If uh, I look 
add uh, where is it ingots the ingots column has uh, nine at most on those two runs when i did exchange it uh, when i did, did exchange the black trash if i didn't i would always make about eight ingots per hour that was my average without any loot scrolls and without a camasil blessing so basically just a regular grinding without arsha as well um, the cash column includes the cash dropped from monsters, plus what I would get by selling to the NPC some, some of the trash crystals, some of the trash green weapons, and also the leftover trash items that I couldn't exchange for ingots. Yes, this place is so outdated that, that you actually have to exchange trash for ingots. Um, blackstones, blackstone weapons and armors, these don't exactly drop that much from monsters, most of them come from the enhanced armor drops and weapon drops. And um, the only other thing I would like to mention is that I got two enhanced, you know, I, I have two sessions where I sold some enhanced pieces to the marketplace. There was a plus 15 Crea weapon plus 12 Grunil shoes and plus 13 Grunil gloves. Those I sold to the marketplace because they were either sold out or low in quantity and they gave me more profit than if I would have extracted the black stones out of them. In, in the rest, I kept all of the Grunil, gro Grunil drops in my inventory to sell them to the marketplace. Forbidden books, they don't really drop that much in average. Yeah, I got 12 in almost 10 hours, so not even one and a half average per hour. Mystical shards were actually interesting. I got four of them in almost 10 hours, whereas on other spots, I wouldn't even get one or I would get at most one in 10 hours. So either I got lucky with the drops or it has a higher drop rate. The same goes for petals. I got eight of them in 10 hours, which seems higher than usual. The trash gems, sometimes uh, I would sell them to the NPC because they are not worth that much and they take inventory space. Other times I would keep them in my inventory they are not really worth that much, but still. I got one normal big scroll, which is pretty worthless. I gave it 1 million value just because it gives you some blackstones, and I kept the heave armor pieces as well. Mostly I tried to keep the helmets because those have a real value. The other three pieces I have no idea why I kept them because they are very cheap. I probably just kept them because they don't have a lot of weight and uh, I had the inventory space. And then there's this very cheap trash elixir which you might as well sell to the NPC because it's not worth anything. And that brings this place to an average of 23.7 million per hour, which is honestly exactly what I was expecting. I thought this place is worth between 20 and 25 million per hour, and that's exactly where it landed. So with this, I will have on the screen now the rankings, because again, I I'm gonna try my best to get close to the real values, just guessing, but I will make the ranking while editing. So I would say that experience wise it's maybe a B or B minus. I'm curious if I'm gonna get guess this right whatsoever. Um, just because it seems very low experience, especially at higher levels because of the lack of a Marnie stone. Skill experience probably A or A plus because I never gave any spot in the past an S, not even bandits, which is which was the best up until now, because I always expected something to beat bandits. And with the recent buff to Fadus and Polyforest, I'm waiting for the Marnie Stones to actually test those areas, but those might be able to get an S ranking because they might actually have higher skill experience. Uh, convenience wise, or let's say first money per hour, probably also B or B minus because it's not that good. And, and convenience, this one is a little bit weird because it's not a contested spot, you don't need high gear for it, you don't, uh, you know, you have a repair at Sarma Outpost, very close. Uh, the, the only things that actually drag down this spot is that first of all you need a lot of inventory space and weight limit to even grind here. You need decent pets, 
which is something that new players don't exactly have. They will probably have only tier 1 pets. And on top of all of that, you can't grind here for like 4 hours at once because you need to sell all of the armors or put them in a storage. In the past, people used to put containers in Kusha, uh, right next to Sarma Outpost, and also use wagons to grind here, but seeing the money per hour rate, I would definitely say it's not worth it to do it these days. There are a lot of other better alternatives. Just look at Bandits. It, it, Bandits has a better money per hour rate, it has the same skill experience rate, and it has a lot higher normal experience rate. So, you know, just go to Bandits, don't go to Sawson's. That should pretty much end this video. Am I uh, disappointed? A little bit. I was hoping this place would surprise me with the enhanced drops and give me some, you know, something uh, to feel impressed. Maybe 35 million per hour, I don't know, something. Do I regret testing this area? No, because I didn't grind here in a very long time and why not see what, you know, what it has to offer compared to Valencia. Because as we all know, most people go to Valencia as soon as they can. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something from this. I will see you with the next one, which will most likely be Star's End, because I already spoiled it the last time, an area which I actually did want to test in the first place. Um, it will most likely be named an unofficial spot review, for reasons that you will find out in a couple of days. And until then, stay happy, keep getting hyped I suppose for shy, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.